Conservative new media viewers, Jeremy Lin fans around the world, what's up? It's me, PFE, Paul F. Villarreal, the NBA expert, and we're here to discuss the Brooklyn Nets' 116-108 to loss tonight to the Cleveland Cavaliers in Brooklyn, New York. Now, I first just want to say I intended to be back to cover the Jazz game and the Pacers game. The Jazz game, I got in late that night. The Pacers game, I'll talk about that in just a second. But we're back. Wanted to kind of get this podcast done just to let people know I'm back around and that we are uh, back in business. Here's what happened to me with the Pacers game. And I think this is something that a lot of you can identify with. And then I'll talk about tonight's game against the Cavs. I sat down and I started watching the Pacers game. And for the first time all season, I just felt a general sense of disinterest. The losses are all piling up. They're starting to you know, get to me. I know they're getting to other Jeremy fans. Jeremy's not playing. He's missed a lot of time. And it was just that the... It was the only time this year where I just felt like, Bleh, I just don't want to deal with this. And I think that's the way a lot of Jeremy fans are feeling right now. It's probably the way a lot of Nets fans are feeling right now. Because it, it, it seems like no matter what the team does... They just can't do anything. People have said it's like a D-League team, which the NBA, their developmental league is known as the D-League, the developmental league. And it's it's like the Nets are just outgunned every single day, every single time they take the court. It's like teams are toying with them, just playing around with them. And look, it gets old. I mean, this was the calculation that Jeremy made when he chose to join this team. Now, the team would be a lot better if Jeremy had been healthier this year, but still, this is a team that's building from the the ground up, and they have kind of borne out the expectations by experts that they're not going to be that good, and maybe they're the worst team in the league, and, and so on. The good part about this, though, is is, as bad as I felt watching the Pacers game and as bad as I'm sure all of you guys feel in witnessing this season, this is the worst it's going to be. I'm sure it's frustrating for Jeremy. I'm sure it's frustrating for Coach Atkinson. I'm sure it's frustrating for the players. Everything is new. The talent level isn't high. And Coach Atkinson is just learning how to be a a head coach in the NBA so he doesn't know everything about lineups and rotations. And he's learning the personnel. So he doesn't know that. He doesn't know which guys work well with each other. And this is what it looks like unfortunately and there are nights where it is really boring and it is difficult to find a reason to watch and that's how i felt in the indiana game and that's and why i ended up not doing a video about it just because it's like it's one of those games where you just you know you want to throw your television out the window and watch it fall down the stories and blow up at the when it hits at the bottom and it's um but now i'm over that And I'm hoping that you, as a Jeremy Lin fan, can get beyond that as well. Jeremy's still at the games. He's still working on rehabilitating his hamstring. We don't have a timetable the same way that we didn't have a timetable in the first hamstring injury. Uh, If it's a grade one tear, which is what I think it is, he'll probably be back in the near future. Maybe in a week, week and a half, something like that. The grade two, that's the longer timetable, which I think was the injury that he first suffered was a grade two tear. That'd be my guess. I don't have any information on that. I think this one, it is less, and I think he will be back relatively soon. But here we are. So we're we're in the position of having to watch a team that is not going to make the playoffs, 
is probably going to have a lot of different players on it next year than are on the team this year. And it's it's difficult. It's like being a fan of a uh, pinata. You know the pinata is going to end up getting blown up and it's going to end up losing against the stick. But you still got to watch it. And that's kind of what it is. The good thing is, is that we are seeing the development of certain players. And that's really good. And tonight's star, in terms of that metric, was Karis LeVert. This was his best game as a professional player against the, the Cavs tonight. And we also saw the, the first start for Spencer Dinwiddie rather than Isaiah Whitehead. Now, as we've talked about numerous times this season, there are a number of deficiencies for the Nets. But one of the, probably the most damaging deficiency for them is they don't, they haven't been able to get good point guard play because Gravis Vasquez was hurt and then cut and because Jeremy's been hurt all year. So you're going with a rookie in Isaiah Whitehead and you're going with somebody who is kind of on the fringes of whether he can or cannot play in the league in Spencer Dinwiddie. For a new team with a new offense, so much relies on the point guard to orchestrate the team and get guys into the spots they're supposed to be and move the ball, and they just they just haven't been able to get that. Jeremy's only played 12 or so games. Gravis played, what, about five or six games. And it just, that's a huge bottleneck. Uh, and uh, if that had been different this year, if you had an experienced backup who was playing when, when Jeremy's been out, it would have been a different thing. Even though the Nets do certainly have talent limitations, it still would have been better than what you're seeing right now. But that's what it is. So, today... I, Spencer Dinwiddie did start. Isaiah Whitehead came off the bench recently since since I know since I've been gone. Joe Harris has entered the starting lineup. I think that's a good move. Um, Boyan started the last couple games. I think Joe Harris at first was starting for Boyan, and now they put Boyan back into the starting lineup as well. So tonight's starting lineup was Dinwiddie, Joe Harris, Boyan Bogdanovich, Trevor Booker and Brooke, Brooke Lopez, you know, the same front court there with Brooker and Lopez. And look, they this was a pretty good game. The, the uh, Brooklyn was more competitive in this game than what I thought they were going to be. Uh, I'm sure they were covered the spread in terms of the point spread of what the game was. I think the Brooklyn was like 13 and a half point underdogs. They did that. They came back in the fourth quarter and they made it into a real contest. Brooklyn went on like a 15 to nothing run at near the start of the fourth quarter. Give them credit. Cleveland was coming off of a difficult loss to Chicago Bulls in their last game. They were upset. They we're getting back Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving, who themselves have been missing because of injuries and sickness. They were very focused, and they were definitely going to win this game, almost no matter what. And Cleveland's one of the top two or three teams in the league. They're the defending champions. But I give, I give Brooklyn credit. They hung around. They made it competitive, and that's good to see. And, look, a lot of what this – season is as well and i kind of alluded to it earlier there is you're this is like an extended tryout for a lot of these players and not only is it a tryout for the nets it's kind of like where will you play if you are going if we're going to keep you next year are you going to be a starter are you going to be come off the bench this is what they're figuring out with people like sean kilpatrick like Boyan, like Joe Harris, should we keep you? Can you make it as a, in our top five unit, or is, are you better suited to come off the bench? Are you not really an NBA player? Maybe you know somebody like a Justin Hamilton or guys that are even more on the the the, the edges. And that's what this is for Brooklyn. 
uh, obviously it they're not having fun nobody's having fun on the team nobody likes losing like this i know jeremy doesn't like losing i mean that's he had to think long and hard about whether he wanted to be in this type of situation but as we said as i said a couple minutes ago and as i said a number of times this year this is the bottom it's not going to be worse than this at least health permitting uh this is as bad as it's going to be we are now close to being halfway through the season and that's it played 35 games 41 games is halfway through the season so there's we're not going to have to endure this so much longer certainly we we absolutely hope jeremy will be able to put his health issues behind him and just move on from that he's been very healthy the last five years so there's i think there's a strong chance of that don't know why the hamstring stuff's coming up we do know that the hamstring injury that he's dealing with is not the same one that he had before so it's not a re-injury it's a, a different area of the hamstring that he hurt so that's that's good um hopefully he can just move on from that but it's as we said is brooke lopez going to be on the team for the whole year is he going to get traded is Trevor Booker a good starting prospect, or is he better maybe as a bench player? What about Boyan? How quickly can the, the young guys develop, like Ronnie Hollis Jefferson, like Whitehead, like Karis LeVert, and so forth? And I can tell you in watching that Coach has made, he's made his share of mistakes too, and that's what you expect from a rookie coach. You're going to get that. And, uh, it's it's like I said, it, it's very, it's frustrating. I'm sure it's frustrating to, to long-term Nets fans, although they're, I'm sure they're, they're somewhat used to this. Though this is a better circumstance than what they have been dealing with. As I said, in, in recent years, the way the team was managed uh, in terms of their general manager and stuff, it just, I, there wasn't a lot of hope. I think now there's more hope even though this is a difficult season. But for Jeremy fans, it's, it's, I know it's really difficult. We felt like he's finally getting away from the negative situations he's been in, although Charlotte was a very good situation. He's finally getting a start. He's kind of getting his own team, and, and now we're free. Now we can have fun again. And then this, 8-27, and 27, and Jeremy's hurt for a good portion of the year. Are we? It's kind of like, are we ever going to get to the top of the mountain? And I think the answer is still yes. But there's some distance between where we're at right now and the top of the mountain. And it seems like there's always distance, and that's why it's frustrating. But uh, the time is coming. What I personally hope for in terms of the rest of this season, and I hope to be covering most of the games between now and the end of the season I, i've you know the holidays are over and we're uh, i'm feeling good to go i'm hoping jeremy gets healthy i'm hoping that jeremy can find his groove with the team and his teammates in terms of chemistry and sync and i'm hoping that jeremy can feel good about his three-point shot hit his shots and just kind of develop his own individual game and, and be able to show the improvements that he's made in his game, like over the summer, the three-point shot, being able to find his own role in this offense, having good chemistry with Brooke, uh, and so forth, and just feel like he's where he wants to be in terms of with uh, – with things in this offense heading into next year. That's what I'm hoping for, is that the second half of the season he can be healthy and really just figure out what he can and can't do in this offense and what he thinks he needs to fine-tune heading into the summer. Maybe a little bit more ball handling, maybe a little bit more one-on-one isolation offense move development and and so forth and and that's what i'm looking for and as we head into as we're heading towards the second half of the season that's really all i have to say in terms of this game as i said look cleveland was always going to win this game boring something crazy i just i 
I, obviously, I pay a lot of attention to the Nets. The Cavs are probably the team I spend the second most time focused on during this particular season. Uh, I, I knew they were going to win this game. They had to win this game. They were very upset after losing the game to the Bulls. And it's they expected to win this game and win it relatively easily. So uh, I'm not surprised by that. I'm... Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I'm, but like I said, I'm glad that Brooklyn put up a fight. I'm glad that Brooklyn made a comeback. No, they can hang their heads high after this outing. So let's head on to the next one and try to get something done there. And that next game coming up will be in two days from now, Sunday, January 8th, here in the United States. It will be, once again, in Brooklyn, New York, against the Philadelphia 76ers. Note that it's an early start time, 12 p.m. here on the East Coast. So that's much earlier than the 7 o'clock start times. You get this usually on Sunday games, um, sometimes on Saturday, although Saturday you won't get a 12 p.m. start. So just note that the game will be earlier. Philadelphia is a beatable team. They're definitely a team that, that, that Brooklyn is capable of defeating, even with Jeremy out. As far as Jeremy's injury, as I said earlier, I haven't heard anything. No timetables. I haven't heard anything since Jeremy himself spoke four or five days ago and said that he's able to shoot. The injury isn't as bad as the last one. He was able to start shooting much earlier after this injury than he was in the initial hamstring injury so that's good news but with the nets they just they don't do timetables they don't give out tons and tons of information uh i think that's good for the players because it doesn't put pressure on the player about okay we said you'd be back by january 10th and so get ready you better be back but it's frustrating for the fans because you never know how long it's going to take um We'll just have to wait until we get more information. I guess the next big development in terms of this re- in terms of this this rehabilitation from this injury will be when Jeremy is allowed to practice again. Now he is currently not practicing. The last time when he came back, he practiced for like a day or two, and then he was playing again. So we'll just have to wait until we get word that that Jeremy is cleared to participate in practices. And obviously, that'll be a pretty good sign that the, the the return to game action won't be far in into the future after that. That is about it. I hope you all had great holidays and were able to eat good food, spend time with your families, and I hope it's not too cold where you're at if you're in the Northern Hemisphere like I am, and it's real cold here in Northeastern Pennsylvania right now, but that's okay. That's why it's winter. Southern Hemisphere, where many of our viewers are. Hopefully, you're enjoying summer and you're having a great time and uh, you're just uh, enjoying things. That is it for now. As we said, we will be here again less than 48 hours as the Brooklyn Nets take on the Philadelphia 76ers. Really hoping that Brooklyn can get a win in this game. And I do think that all of this changing of the lineups changing the starting rotation again it it has to be done it's i do think it's starting to pay off like i definitely i think it's a good thing to put joe harris into the starting lineup and it we took a long time to figure that out and you you don't know that until you're 20 25 games into the season and uh as i said coach is a rookie and it's it's going to take him time. This is going to take him time to figure it out and to figure out how to handle everything. But progress is being made. So I just as I had to tell myself during and after the Indiana game, hang in there. We're going to get through this together. We've we've been in similar or worse situations as Jeremy Lin fans, whether it was the losing with the Lakers or the nonsense with the Lakers or the nonsense with the Rockets. Uh, the great thing here is Jeremy doesn't have to worry about his starting spot. He doesn't have to worry about does the coach like him or not and all this. So um, 
we just have to kind of stay with it a little bit longer. Hopefully, Jeremy will be back soon and feeling good, and he'll stay healthy from 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 there forward going into the season. Take care. We will talk to you again soon. Sunday afternoon, Brooklyn Nets host the Philadelphia 76ers.